Today we have what we call the eschatological discourse in Luke's gospel. Matthew also has a, a long discourse of Jesus of the end times. And this is only part of it. It continues. Um, today we hear him uh, speak of the destruction of the temple, of upheaval in the world, of persecution and perseverance. And through this persecution, he says, it will lead to your giving testimony that that suffering and cross will bear an eloquent witness, an eloquent preaching of the gospel. So as there's this universal proclamation of the gospel that needs to happen, that's clear in, in Matthew's account. <clears throat> Uh, there's, there's also the discussion of the prophecy of the destruction of Jerusalem itself. And we know this happens in 70 AD. There was an uprising of the Jews against Rome. And the Jews came in and just destroyed everything. The historians say it was an 11-mile radius around Jerusalem <clears throat> of just complete destruction of the trees and all vegetation. <clears throat> and the temple is destroyed. It's, um, the interior of it is burned by fire. Hey, and welcome back to That Was History. I'm Cliff Langston, your host for today. If you've kept up with us thus far, you know that we love to talk about great battles and wars that were fought in the past. Up until now, our main focus has been battles fought from like the early 1700s until present day, but every now and again we get the opportunity to discuss some very ancient history, like today's topic for example. Stick around because today we're talking about the Siege of Jerusalem. In the year 70 AD, the Siege of Jerusalem would occur, which became the decisive event of the First Jewish-Roman War. Led by Titus, the future emperor of the Roman Empire, the Roman army attacked and successfully conquered the city of Jerusalem. Prior to this, the Jewish people had occupied Jerusalem since 66 AD. Some witness accounts claim that Titus didn't intend to destroy the temple. Apparently, his men became tired and angry and decided to destroy the temple against his will. According to reports, over one million people were killed during the siege, and another 97,000 were captured or enslaved. When Titus was offered a wreath of victory after the siege, it is said that he refused the honor, claiming the victory did not come through his own efforts, but that he had merely served as an instrument of God's wrath. The Ark of Titus was built in 82 AD to honor Titus and his victories, including the siege of Jerusalem. Believe it or not, the arch still stands to this day. And there seems to be a parallel between uh, the destruction of the temple and this prophecy of the end of the world, the destruction of the world and a fire there as well. <clears throat> and the Christians, the early Christians would flee. They were given signs and messages. Yigayel revealed breathtaking evidence of Masada's fall in 73 CE, when 15,000 troops of the Roman 10th Legion besieged the final bastion of Jewish independence in the homeland. The legion constructed an enormous ramp up its western cliff and breached Masada. Instructed to flee the city, to flee this uh, revolt and destruction. And the temple would never be rebuilt, even to this day. And the sacrifices uh, have not <clears throat> happened since that time because they've lost the temple. And there will be a time of the Gentiles, meaning the a time of the church, made up of all peoples, a gathering of all nations are called into the church. This is what Jesus refers to as the time of the Gentiles. And then, it's not here, but in the next few passages, he talks about his second coming, that this heaven and earth will pass away, that there will be a, a judgment. But he encourages us by saying, your redemption is drawing near that the kingdom of God is near, this consummation, this fulfillment when these things happen, this chaos, this destruction. UN representatives investigating the ongoing Syrian conflict claim Syrian government forces have used thermobaric weapons in the battle to take back the town of Qusair. Russia's thermobaric bomb is a two-stage explosive weapon that uses fuels such as ethylene oxide to produce an intense fireball and devastating blast wave. The bomb is dropped by plane before deploying its parachute. After reaching a predetermined height, the bomb's shell breaks, releasing the explosive fuel which forms a cloud of fine spray. 
A secondary explosion then ignites the dispersed fuel, creating a massive blast and pressure wave that destroys buildings within a 300-meter radius. The deadly blast ruptures the vital organs while literally sucking the air out of the lungs of those caught within the blast radius. It can damage the eardrums of people for miles around. The Russian version of the thermobaric weapon is said to employ nanotechnology to create an explosive force equivalent to 44 tons of TNT. Uh, this passing of this world, this world is ending, uh, but that is happening with the fulfillment of the kingdom, the consummation of the kingdom.